Watch out! Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has almost all but fully leaked, and this past week or two has been insanely crazy and densely packed with the leaks that have come out for the game. Now, I've been covering some of the leaks. I've covered up to part three of the leaks, but in this video, so much has leaked in the past few days that we're going to be covering part four to part 13 of the leaks roundups. This is gonna be my first time seeing a lot of these as well So you're gonna get to see my reactions and you guys get to have yours as well as we all watch together So let's take a look at these leaks that Centro has rounded up on Twitter from the credible leakers We know for a fact that these leaks are real So if you don't want spoilers for the game Feel free to look elsewhere right now, because right now we're about to see pretty much everything. Now here we are starting with Central Leaks Twitter, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Leaks Part 4. Now this isn't exactly a heavy hitter we're starting out with, but things are going to get crazy as we go through these leaks. If I remember correctly, it kind of starts in Part 5, but we'll go over Part 4 real quick as well. The Jigglypuff that we saw in the last video that it's referring to here is an ancient Form. That makes sense because it kind of looked like Jigglypuff Dracula. So I'm excited to see that in full realization in the game. For those of you who needed to see the Jigglypuff, here it is. This is essentially what it's going to look like. This is a fan art, um, but this is pretty much completing what we saw with the leaked photo of the past version of Jigglypuff. The crystallization gimmick seems to power up types, so it's like gaining an additional stab. For example, you can power up Pikachu to get a fire type boost, but it won't get additional weaknesses. So it is kind of something with the typing, which is something that I thought was going to be the case a long time ago when it comes to the gimmick for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, because, you know, there was that whole typing wheel in the main city and the diamonds and a few other things, you know, how that reflects light and light, you know, all the typings have different colors. Uh, so we're kind of getting something along the lines of that, okay? So it gives you stab for typings that aren't actually your main typing. So Pikachu can have a stab power up on a fire type move. That's pretty insane. Now, in regards to the crystallization gimmick, when a Pokemon returns to its ball, the crystallization ends. Interesting. Gyms can be done in any order. However, there is no scaling. You must clear three routes and quests to see the ending. Those are not past, present, or future. We don't know what they are exactly. I imagine that that's referring to the gym challenge personally because you can do them in any order and they're kind of like, they seem to be part of the overworld. So that's probably why this person's calling them roots or quests and it might've been a slip of the tongue that it's not like traditionally gyms this time around. You can rebattle gym leaders though, which is really nice. Okay, that's awesome. I always love that. I always love being able to rebattle anyone, honestly. I hope you can rebattle everyone. Hypno is back, but doesn't have a new form. Bidoof and Beedrill are not in the game, yikes. So Mimikyu and Magikarp are in, but not Applin. Okay, that's a shame because Applin is another Gen 8 Pokemon that I wanted to see more of. I wanted to see Gen 8 Pokemon outside of Gen 8, so I'm kind of sad about Applemont being in. But Mimikyu and Magikarp being in is actually really good, obviously. I haven't seen Mimikyu in a while. And Magikarp, who doesn't love Magikarp and Gyarados? There's no difficulty options in this game. Okay, I don't think anyone really expected that, but I, I know that people want that. The Elite Four is back. I'm assuming they mean this to a full extent because the Elite Four did kind of exist in Sword and Shield, but it was just the gym leader. So I'm wondering if the Elite Four in this game, if they're insinuating that it's completely different people from the gym challenge, or if it it is kind of like, it could be like Sword and Shield again, where it's just the gym challenge leaders being in the Elite Four. I don't know. We'll see. There are classes, exams, and interviews in the game. So they are going for a school aspect. I wonder if the interviews are similar to what we've seen in past Pokemon games where they ask you questions and then you see it on TV, or maybe the interviews are for the school system. And in that case, I wonder if it's kind of like pop quizzes that we need to pass or fail on our Pokemon knowledge for us as the player, for our character to progress through the game. That would actually be really fun. I, I hope that that is the case. That sounds really, really fun. Apparently, there is a hammer Pokemon, or at least one that uses a hammer. Okay, right here, Central Leaks is trying to explain the different gimmicks that the game has, so we're gonna go ahead and follow their train of thought. Crystallization 
used by most NPCs, changes the look of your Pokemon and boosts a specific type that you can choose. Kind of like what we were talking about with the stab fire for Pikachu. So it gains an additional stab, basically. It's activated by using an object. So this here looks like a crystallized version of, I want to say, I think its name was Lilip from Gen 3. I could be wrong. I don't remember the name. Um, but yes, this is a crystallized Pokemon right here. And then we have regional fakes, yet another type of clones. These are a small group of new Pokemon that, for meme reasons, look ridiculously similar to existing Pokemon. For example, Diglett appear apparently has a water type clone slash fake, an eel that behaves and whose face looks like Diglett. What? That is so insanely weird. I had to like double down on reading that just now, but that sounds really fun. I, I like, I like the idea of that, but it also, so these are real Pokemon I'm assuming and we can catch them too. And if so, an eel Pokemon that tries to look like Diglett or acts similarly to Diglett, that's really interesting. I want to see that in game and to fully understand it for one and to also just like, that sounds like a fun idea, you know? Um, okay, I'm down with that. And of course, regional forms and regional evolutions are still here. And now we're going to get crazy again. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Leaks Part 5. Tauros has a new regional form. Form. Okay, so people have been speculating that and looks like that's true. Overworld Shinies are probably back. Okay, so that's what the leaker said. They said probably back. I guess they don't have confirmation. But judging by the way the game works, I assume that they are. Trainer customization is more limited. All clothing options are school uniforms. So for those of you who don't like the way it works in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, I'm sorry. I'm one of those people too, but it look, looks like we're going to have less customization options for our characters. It's going to be school uniforms, kind of similar to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl with how it's all one outfit, and then kind of similar to Sword and Shield with what you could get from the gyms with the different uh, gym uniforms that you could get, although you couldn't wear them in the gyms, which was weird, but whatever. Uh, so, a new Pokemon that looks similar to Doug Trio. so I guess that's also referring to the fake Pokemon that they mentioned earlier, or the RE fakes, whatever that means. I'm assuming they're real Pokemon, but they look like other Pokemon. The camera is still controllable in battle. Nice. Okay, so that means when you're in battle, you can move the camera around. Now, we don't know if we can move our character around in battle. That's another thing, and they haven't said that apparently. But we do now know that we can move the camera around, which is nice. Okay. I wonder if there's also an option to give it kind of an auto moving, like like let it move on its own, because that's what we saw in the trailers. Like it even had a little icon at the top left of the screen that showed that it was out of our control. So I don't know if that was maybe just a developer thing or if that's actually going to be something in the finalized version of the game. We'll see. The leaker says the music is 10 out of 10. Okay, well, that's all subjective. So I can't really do anything with that. Like, to me, you know, like Gen 8 music was one of the best and Gen 2 music some of the best and Pokemon Legends had some of the best music, but some other people disagree with that. So like, nah, this is a completely subjective thing. I, I can't say r anything on the matter. Palmy's evolution is electric and fighting. Okay, well, there you have it. Electric fighting. At least it gets a dual typing as it goes. I know some people were disappointed that it was a single typing for Palmy itself, but it's going to get a dual typing as it evolves. So there you go. Now, right here, they said there is no third legendary in this generation. So I'm assuming what that means is kind of like in Sword and Shield, how you had the two dogs and then Eternatus. So that means we're not going to have a Pokemon like Eternatus in the game or Rayquaza or Giratina. You get the point. <laughs> the main game took 60 hours for the leaker. Though they admit they're not particularly good, but you don't have to be particularly good to play a Pokemon game. So, I mean, that is a good sign in my opinion. A child becomes one of the Elite Four. Okay, so maybe the gym leaders are not the Elite Four then. There's a bonding quest that Eevee fans will enjoy. Ooh, I'm excited to see that one. Reminds me of Pokemon Legends and a lot of the quests in that. There aren't any cameos from old characters in the main story. So there might be in the post game and maybe even in the DLC. There is no bike in this game. Instead, you ride Koraidon Maraidon. Okay, 
Um, that confirms a lot of our speculation, so that's awesome. When riding, you move very fast and you can still catch and battle Pokemon. So we know that you can't throw your balls out in the overworld while, um, you know, in the overworld. <laughs> so I'm wondering how that's going to work. They said that you can still catch and battle Pokemon while on the bike. So I wonder if it takes you off the bike to uh, get into the Pokemon fight or if your player is shown standing on the bike or, you know, sitting on the bike with their leg on the ground uh, as they battle or catch Pokemon. That's very interesting to me. Um, curious to see how that goes. You can also climb swim and fly with them. Exactly what we thought. Kayla and I thought this exact thing. Wow. There's no fishing in this game and you know what? I'm fine with that. There's a new auction house where you can buy items. You can participate with other NPCs. Interesting. So let's move on to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Leaks part six. Palmy's evolution is electric fighting, which they had just mentioned in a previous tweet. So we already know that. But Smoliv evolves into an olive tree. I think people had already speculated that, but now you have official proof. I wonder if it's going to be a cute tree or if it's going to be a scary, intimidating tree. Now that is the real question, if you ask me. Now, Fue Coco's evolution is not bipedal. We know that Sprigatito's is, but Fue Coco's is not. So that means Fue Coco's going to get down on all fours. Fue Coco was bipedal itself, and then it's going to evolve into something on all fours, which is... Pretty neat, okay, so I'm excited to see what that is. And then Ponyard gets a new evolution, but not Bisharp, so that means it's gonna be similar to Sneasel getting an evolution in Pokemon Legends to Sneasler instead of Weevil. So that's gonna be cool to see for Ponyard, and I kinda like that because Ponyard and Bisharp look very similar, so I'm hoping that they get a little more creative with Ponyard's evolution this time around. Primeape gets an evolution. So Primeape will now be a gen or a, a stage two Pokemon. Wow. And I thought Primeape was Primeape not good competitively. I thought Primeape was probably a decent Pokemon, but I guess not. Or maybe they'll just down its stats to adjust for a third evolution. We'll see. Mistrevis gets an ancient species. Okay. I'm Curious to see how they change Mistrevis design. Mistrevis is a ghost, so uh, how has its design changed over time? Like, how is there an ancient version of it? Maybe it's gonna look more like, I guess, like tribes of people instead of just a woman, because it kind of looks like, what, like a little girl or a, a woman right now. Maybe it'll have like different jewel, like it has kind of a jewel on it, right, with its necklace. Maybe that'll look more old-fashioned or something. Uh, those are my takes on what it might be that changes from Mischievous, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, Delibird, this is going to make me really happy. Delibird gets a future species, and Delibird is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. So, and it not being such a good Pokemon to battle with, I hope that the future species not only looks as, as endearing as Delibird, but also is better in combat than Delibird. There's a new ghost dog Pokemon, a new coin Pokemon, and a new fairy Pokemon. Now, these are all unlisted from the, like, leaks part whatever, so maybe these will be further explained in another tweet as we go. There's a new bike Pokemon that is not Coridon or Maridon. So when it said not a new bike Pokemon, I was assuming something maybe like Rotom, because you know how you get the Rotom bike in Pokemon Sword and Shield, but they're saying that there's going to be another bike Pokemon that's not Crydon and Maridon. So we know there's not a third legendary, so it can't be that. So it must just be a normal Pokemon based on the design of a bike? Okay, I guess. Uh, Y'all do you with your Pokemon designs this generation. I... I <laughs> I, I haven't quite understood a lot of their um, designs this gen so far, but I don't know. Other people have been loving it, so I'll let you guys enjoy your time with it. Tauros's new form is black. Okay, we're going to find out later that there's more than just one form of Tauros. So interesting. Okay, one of them is black. Got it. There are eight to nine ancient species. Correction, that was actually about the future species. So there's eight to nine future species. Okay, interesting. There are 120 to 140 new Pokemon. 
that includes ancient and future species. That is insane. I think the only games that we've had that many new Pokemon from were Gens 1 and 5, right? Like that is a lot, 120 to 140. All gym leaders have a second job. Okay, so they're adding personality and lives to the characters. That is awesome. One gym leader is a skier. Another one is a streamer. Awesome. Streamer, you know, we're gonna get along just great. <laughs> There's a new samurai Pokemon. The new Pokemon with a hammer is pink. Nice to know. There are three new dog Pokemon. One of them is the ghost dog mentioned by the other leaker. Okay, and there's one new spider Pokemon line. It was teased in the first trailer. Oh, is that the spider web looking thing on the, uh, in the Scarlet Violet room and like the live action sequences? Ooh, interesting. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet leaks part eight. An existing cactus Pokemon is getting something. We don't know exactly what. So we know it's not a regional form, that's for sure. So it might be getting a future form, a past form, or maybe something to do with the gimmicks is gonna change it or something, who knows? The new Pokemon with a hammer is fairy plus another type. Okay, so it's a fairy type with a hammer. I'd never really pictured a fairy holding a hammer, but here we are today. Volcarona gets an ancient species. Okay, Veteran X Gaming's gonna be happy about that because not only does that confirm that Volcarona is in the game, but it's gonna have a new form. That's pretty fun. Gallade gets a future species. Okay, that's nice too. The more, the merrier. I'm always happy about it. And I'm glad that these aren't just like Gen 1 Pokemon. They're not, they're, they're Gen, I mean, they're fan favorites, sure, Volcarona and Gallade, but like, at least they're not just Gen 1 Pokemon. One's Gen 5, one's Gen... Glade was what, Gen 4? I think they added him after Gen 3 to be one of the evolutions because people are misogynistic. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Leaks Part 9. There's no breeding in these games, but eggs are still there. So it looks like there's a new mechanic. I'm fine with that, honestly, because breeding is tedious, it's boring. I never liked it. I thought Pokemon Legends did the perfect thing with Eevees and Ivies by just giving you items to use to upgrade them. That's it. That way you can have whichever Pokemon you want, make them the best version of themselves that you possibly can, because that's the one that you had those memories with. Like, why do you need to breed another one out of them and then like treat them like some sort of, you know, S-E-X slave? I don't know if I can say that word on here and not get my channel taken down. So <laughs> I'm just gonna spell it out for you guys. All right, uh, Salamence gets either an ancient or future species. Okay, down with that. Leg counts for the starters and their evolutions. All right, Sprigatito starts with four legs. Second evolution goes down to two. Final evolution, two legs. The duck, um, Quaxley, Two legs, two legs, two legs, okay. So Quaxley's entire line sounds to me like it's gonna have a dual typing with fighting. <laughs> and then we have the uh, Fue Coco Gator dude. Two legs, second evolution is two legs again. And the final evolution is four legs. So I assume its final form is gonna be quite monstrous. I was kind of hoping it would be cute rather than monstrous, but we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, clarification regarding breeding. The leaker specifically told us that there's no Pokemon daycare slash nursery. There's a new mechanic to get eggs. Hopefully, it's... Ugh, I, I'm, I'm both excited and scared. Like, I don't think it could get worse than how breeding was before, but it's also Game Freak we're talking about. It could very well get worse. <laughs> you never know. Um, Magikarp is in the game. They confirmed again. We already knew that. All right. Now, speculation. The old leaker said that there's two pseudo-legendaries, ancient and future species. Considering it was hinted that Salamence and Tyranitar are version exclusives in that last trailer, we think both of them are these pseudos. That makes perfect sense. Obviously, we don't know for sure, but it does make perfect sense, and I think we should uh, probably prepare ourselves for that being the truth. Probably. So now there's an, an explanation of the new types of Pokemon species. So, oh, there's a, okay, so ancient and future species are ancestors or descendants for a current Pokemon that have time traveled from the past or future. And that's probably why we can only get one of each. These species don't evolve. They are standalone Pokemon, also a legendary type attribute, okay? But with high stats. So, okay, so that means that that future Delibird is gonna be good in battle, good. These are classified as brand new Pokemon with their own name and Pokedex entry. No way! So the the future Delibird is gonna have a different name. 
I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Okay, that's really cool. Convergent species, on the other hand, are a number of new Pokemon that look very similar to old Pokemon. Okay, so this is the new name for RE Fake, which is thank goodness because, oh, I'm pretty sure that was Riddler Kutok because I, I, I can never understand his, his riddles. So, Convergent species, they, are, they look like other Pokemon, like that eel we talked about looking like Doug Trio. They are completely unrela unrelated to the original counterpart, but look pretty much the same. Almost like a recolor. They can have different typings. These species are based on the convergent evolution concept from biology. Look it up. They also have their own name in Pokedex entry. Oh, we need to look this up now. Aha, here we go. In evolutionary biology, convergent evolution is defined as the process whereby distantly related organisms independently evolve similar traits to adapt to similar necessities. Okay, so similarly to see how we have this dolphin and the shark here, they have similar attributes, right? They got fins, they have a top fin up here, back fins, uh, and some down at the bottom, you know? So they're not uh, completely related, they're distantly related, but they develop similar things to be able to swim, for instance. Okay, so that makes sense. So I wonder why there's an underwater version of Doug Trio. Maybe because having to do with burrowing under the ground, perhaps? So you want to, um, both of those kinds of Doug Trio-like Pokemon want to burrow under the ground, just one underwater under the ground and one on dry land under the ground. So that's probably what's gonna be the explanation for that. So that explains that, and now we're gonna move on to, there is a new Earthworm Pokemon. Okay, that's probably the one that was teased in the second trailer towards the end where they showed that thing going up in one of the gym challenges near that uh, like goalpost pole. Uh, there's a new ostrich Pokemon whose hairstyle reminds the leaker of Cleopatra. Okay, that's very interesting. Sounds like another one of those waifu mons slash husbando mons that they were talking about there's going to be a lot of. Raid battles are back. Still multiplayer. Oof. I really hope that they don't do it the same way, though. Like, I'm fine with raid battles, but, like, doing the whole, like, blow them up in size thing, please don't do that. There's a new crap Pokemon. <laughs> Just kidding. New crab Pokemon. Okay, interesting to know. There are new three... There's a new there's three new dog pokemon lines they all have evolutions i wonder if these we're gonna find out that there's like a new fire type three stage line i wonder if one of them is a dog line as well small story spoilers you can't add karidon maridon to your team until the final boss even though you can ride them earlier very interesting so we actually speculated that kayla's capsule and i did that you can ride them but you won't be able to catch them to use in battle till later that's very interesting you can't use your own team for the final boss. What? What in the world? So I'm assuming you end up using your legendary or something, and then you keep them afterwards. So it's probably going to be that. Ponyard's new split evolution may be based on the Rook. Okay. Now, here we are to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Leaks Part 10. There is a new single stage flying and fighting type Flamingo Pokemon. So we've been wanting this ever since Kayla's Capsule pointed out that Flamingos are a common Pokemon, or <laughs> common Pokemon, common animal that exists in the Iberian Peninsula. So we knew that this was coming a little bit. We also saw some leaked images of this particular Pokemon in my last video, but now we have confirmation that it's a flying and fighting type. There aren't any new evolutionary stones. Okay, that is perfectly fine. Palmy's evolution learns a new move, a one PowerPoint move that revives one of your Pokemon. Welcome to Gen 9 Competitive. Okay, yeah, so that means your Pokemon can now revive an ally without the use of items, and I think that that would be tournament legal. I don't know anything about competitive Pokemon. I'm gonna be talking about this in, a, in an hour or so with Kayla's Capsule. She's probably gonna mention this as something she's excited for uh, because she is big into competitive. But for me, like that's, that's like, it makes not much of a difference. Like I play through the campaign, I use items. Well, I try not to use items actually. But maybe I'll use this move. Okay, so I guess it does kind of affect me because like when I play Pokemon games nowadays, I try not to use items to win my fights, so, except unless they're held items. So I guess this is kind of impactful on me, but it's more impactful for people doing multiplayer because I don't care about multiplayer, but I imagine this is going to be very frustrating for people who play multiplayer or uh, something unfrustrating. But it might be frustrating in the sense that you have to have Palmy on your team in order to do it. So we'll see what people build around that. 
Now, Volcarona is getting a future species. We already knew this. There's a Gen 2 Pokemon that also gets an Ancient and a future species. So we know that Delibird gets a future species. Maybe it gets an Ancient species as well, because that's one we already know about. Or maybe it's just a Pokemon we haven't talked about yet. We'll see. Now, there is a new Fire and Grass type Pokemon, but it's not Smoliv's Evo. A lot of people thought Smoliv would have a Fire typing as its secondary typing. So I guess that deconfirms that. So we know Palmy's a three-stage Pokemon. This seems to be Palmy's final stage here that we've seen in the previous leaked image. Fue Coco's evolution will have a flame shaped like a bird on its head. Ooh, I like that. The new Dolphin Pokemon has a big surprise. The way that that's worded has me um, thinking phallic imagery that I hope is not the case. The Hardcore Queen previously teased uh, and I talked about this in my last video, was uh, actually Gallade. Interesting. So Gallade was like the more male kind of um, evolution for uh, Curlia and Route. So does this mean that this hardcore queen version is kind of like a cross um, gender type of Pokemon? Hardcore queen? Like, is that what they are insinuating here? Like a drag queen? Uh, that's all its future species is actually a combination of Gardevoir. Oh, it's a combination of Gardevoir. Oh, so it is kind of cross-gender. Nice. Good. So maybe they're kind of getting with the times here. Future Galate is based on an archer. I always love that. Um, I always love archer characters, archer Pokemon like Decidueye. It's always fun in games. I love it. Dunsparce's evolution is very similar to the current Dunsparce. Just bigger. That is a darn shame. There's a new two-stage ice Pokemon based on an icicle. Don't we already have that? Oh, I guess that's an ice cream, whatever. There's a new two-stage salt Pokemon. That's weird. New Pokemon based on an engine. Okay, not so weird, makes sense, but it's not Rotom, so. The engine Pokemon is a two-stage line, so it's gonna have one evolution. The hammer fairy Pokemon is a two-stage line as well, so also one evolution. The new leaker is now claiming that it's actually Bisharp is the one getting the new evolution and not Ponyard getting a split evolution. Oh, okay, well. Either way, I hope that it gets a little more creative down the line. Uh, confirmed, okay, this is a question I had. We reached the thousand Pokemon milestone this generation. I actually wasn't sure if we were gonna reach it this time or not. And I'm curious to see if they make a big deal out of who the thousandth Pokemon is. I'm hoping that it's some like overpowered legendary or something like Mewtwo. That would be awesome. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Leaks Part 11. Alpha Pokemon are back. They won't be called like that, but they will have similar functionality and be related to the story. I called this, I totally called this, because of the alpha marks in Pokemon Home. I was like, I think that they're gonna use that outside of just Pokemon Legends, because why else would it keep that marking outside of it if it has to do with just size, you know? It doesn't have to do with anything else. So. That's cool that they're putting them in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And I'm glad that that also confirms size variations, I think, for the most part. I, I also analyzed some footage and thought I saw some size variations, so hopefully that is still true as well. But this is also very promising, so I'm excited to see how they implement that also into the story. Uh, I wonder how that's going to tie in. Mass outbreaks are back. That's always a plus. Okay. Size variations. Okay, look, here we go. Size variations from Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and Pokemon Legends Arceus are back. All right. Now, it does worry me because it says Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which means that it might still not be visual because Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee had size variations, but it didn't show it. Like, you didn't see it visually. However, Pokemon Legends Arceus did, so I wish they had just used one of these as an example to make this a lot clearer for us. Girafferig Evo is pure psychic. Okay. Is Girafferig pure psychic or is that psychic dark? What What is Girafferig? You guys can let me know in the comments. I really don't remember. There's a new Parakeet Pokemon. I love Parakeets, so I'm super excited for that. Dunsparce's evolution is pure normal type. Ooh. Yikes. I also heard, we might be seeing this later in a leak, but um, I also heard that the Dunsparce evolution looks very similar to Dunsparce and like not much has changed from one to the other, which is too bad. A future species for a sumo Pokemon has been teased. Hariyama. Probably Hariyama. I mean, yeah, sumo. Like, who else is, oh, oh, no, there's those Karate Pokemon from, uh, I mean, that's not sumo, but there is the Karate Pokemon from Gen 5. 
Uh, but yes, I assume it's Hariyama because sumo wrestling is definitely Hariyama's thing. Now, the ability to download has been removed because there are no Pokemon... Oh, the ability download has been removed. Okay, that makes more sense. Because there are no Pokemon that have it, so that means Porygon and that entire line are not in the game. Interesting. There's still around 40 to 70 Pokemon that haven't leaked yet. Okay, that is totally fine. The more surprises, the better. Paradox Jigglypuff, which is the past. Paradox Delibird from the future. Retain their original typings. Okay. Paradox Pokemon from the past are exclusive to Scarlet. Wow, okay. Paradox Pokemon from the future are exclusive to Violet. Yes, that means I will get the Delibird variation. I am so happy with that. I don't really mind about missing out on the Jigglypuff one, and I'm sure I could probably find someone to trade for it, but like the Delibird one, yes, please. You can get as many Paradox Pokemon as you want from the endgame area. Okay, so they're treated as legendaries in the sense that you can only get one, but in the post game, you can get as many as you want, which is a thing that's been happening recently in Pokemon. So like uh, Sword and Shield, you're, you're, you have the ability to get all the legendaries, you know, with the DLC or something like that. I guess you can't get as many as you want, but you can in like Pokemon Go, and then you can transfer them over. So like, whatever, you see my point, I think. Or maybe I have no point and that made no sense. I don't know. You get the Rotom catalog via the new auctions mechanic. Auctions mechanic? And Rotom catalog, what does that mean? At some point in development, a new Rotom form was planned, but it was scrapped. Oh, yikes. Maybe it's going to be in DLC, though. Pepper, I think that's Pepper, is a hint for a new Pokemon. Not Foycoco? <laughs> I mean, Foycoco, I think we've, we've decided it's not based on a... Pepper alligator? I don't know if we decided that or not. Some people said like apple alligator. Some people said pepper alligator. Some people said just alligator. I don't know. Or crocodile. Whatever it is. Um, I want to know more about this. What is the Rotom catalog? And, and an auction mechanic. Is there... I don't see anything about that. <gasps> oh my goodness. But look what I, what I just came across. This is tragic. Okay. Only one Pokemon can follow you at a time. Like recent, and even worse beyond that, like recent games, they can't follow you indoors. Why? Why? In Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, they could follow you indoors. And then I'm scared that the following mechanic's not gonna be as good as Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Oh, oh my God, this game has me so scared. Like that's the one mechanic I care about right now, honestly. And I'm so scared that they're gonna mess it up again because they've been doing that consistently ever since let's go pikachu and eevee and like legends arceus found a great in between where they're just like okay we're not gonna have them walk i was fine with that because it didn't break immersion but i'm really scared to see what happens here okay um maybe i just make oh i missed something up here maybe they'll explain the road home catalog up here so this is part 12 of the pokemon scarlet and violet leaks primeape's evolution is fighting in ghost type Weird. Okay, I like that though. Murkrow doesn't have a new evolution. It was a misunderstanding. Okay, uh, I discussed that in my last video, but that's fine because Power World has a, a, a Mon that looks like Murkrow, so I, I'm sure I'll be happy with just playing Power World for a Murkrow evolution, you know? The new move learning system from Pokemon Legends Arceus is back. Awesome! All the quality of life changes that Pokemon Legends Arceus had should remain. I, I will be very angry and sad and disappointed if they don't, because they, they're things that we've needed for so long in this game, in this franchise. Ancient and future Pokemon are called in-game Paradox Pokemon. Okay, and the reason for that, them only having one name, is because you're only going to see one kind of Paradox Pokemon based on the version you get, right? But we, as the players, are obviously going to have to refer to them as, you know, ancient Pokemon or future Pokemon. So we're definitely going to have our own lingo uh, for that compared to what's in-game. Looks like, oh, what is this? Looks like their new Pokemon Ami slash refresh slash camp equivalent for this gen is also what replaces breeding. What? It's Pokemon Picnic. Okay, I like the sound of this already. Hold on. You can wash your Pokemon. Some don't like to be washed. Washing them restores their HP and increases friendship. You can also get eggs. But can you play with all of them at once? Stop bringing these things up and not explaining them. Oh my goodness. Pokemon Camp was the best aspect of Pokemon Sword and Shield for me. Because for me, the experience is about like enjoying your time with your Pokemon, right? So I, I hope that this is, I hope that this is a great 
thing. I hope it's better than camp because like camp I felt like was a great starting ground for uh, for the future of Pokemon games, you know? And then like Legends, you could take your Pokemon out anywhere, uh, like in the overworld, like it doesn't get any better. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm both excited and scared right now to see what, what that entails. Riddler Coup, the old source has retired and won't be sharing any leaks anymore. You know what? Can we have a moment of celebration for that one? Regarding the map size, if you don't go to the sea, maybe it's a bit small, but if you get into the sea or to the island, it's big. The island, is there a whole nother part of the map? Interesting, okay. Arceus is not in the game. Now the leaker also includes that, or claims that, including the ocean and islands, okay, so several islands, that makes sense, Paul Dea is bigger than all of his Sui areas combined. Okay, but it's scary. It sounds to me like they're acknowledging that there's a lot of dead space with the ocean, which was kind of like what Sword and Shield's DLC was like, especially with the Isle of Armor. So I'm hoping that that's not the case here. And here we are at Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Leaks part 13. Paldean Tauros doesn't evolve, however, it has three different forms. Each form lives on a different area of the region. Really? Interesting. So it not only does it have a regional form, but it has three different forms. That's very interesting. Okay. One form is a single type and the other forms have two types. All right. Um, so Tauros is getting lots of love this, this generation. Pokemon that are returning. Here's kind of a roundup. Mimikyu, Gudra, and Hisuian Gudra. Interesting. Snover. Pokemon that are not returning. Smeargol. Come on. Gen 5 starters. Come on. Sharpedo. Come on. What? Smeargol. Not returning. In a region that like is so entrenched in art. Come on. I'm very, very, very sad about that. Smeargol. You know, they, ah, oh, I love Smeargol. And I haven't seen Smeargol in a game in so long. I know he was in BDSP, but like, I never caught one in BDSP, so. And then also don't really care about BDSP much. There's no new Garchomp form. Fueco, oh, okay, well, I mean, I don't really, that's fine, whatever. Fuecoco's Evo signature move is sound-based. Okay, interesting. Palmy's evolution is very good late game. Yeah, I imagine, with the revive. There is a new three-stage fire-type Pokemon, okay. Reaffirmed that gyms don't have level scaling but can be done in any order. So then what's... If they can be done in any order, what's... Why is there no level scaling? What... How does that... How does that compute? Like... <laughs> you're telling me... That they didn't just, like, put some simple coding into this game. To where if you do, like, the like a gym and then you go back to another gym that was like closer to your home, it's gonna still be like level one Pokemon. Are you serious right now? Really? That's what you're telling me. So like they're, 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 you don't have to play the game in order, but it's heavily, 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 almost forced on you that you should play the game in, in a specific order. Why? Just put a level scaling coding algorithm in the game. It's not difficult. It's one algorithm. You set it to everything. There you go. That's all it is. That's all it is. Oh my goodness. I can't deal with them right now. Contonian Tauros is also in the game though. The single type Paldean Tauros is fighting. Interesting. I wonder how that's like a fighting type that's on all fours. That's very, very intriguing to me. Like in Legends Arceus, Pokemon don't evolve automatically. You can choose when to evolve. Yes! Yes! Oh, I wanted that. The flag on the image is related to the evil team. Whoa, I never would have guessed that, but that is awesome to know. So I wonder if the evil team is kind of associated with the gym challenge, because I think this was when they were showing off the gym challenge, unless that was supposed to be a misdirect with the editing of the trailer. Wow. Very, very interesting. There are a few things that they have shared after leak number 13. Uh, so one of them is that the experience share is not optional once again. It is a part of the game. Personally, again, I don't mind that. I don't mind it at all because I, I like having a full team get the experience. It's like any other RPG. Most RPGs do that anyway. 
uh, and it also just like eliminates grind. But I do see, you know, I hope that they scale levels and everything accordingly to that system better. Uh, I think in Sword and Shield it wasn't done quite that great. I think in, yeah, I also think in BDSP it wasn't done that great either. But Pokemon Legends did it really well. So we'll see, we'll see how that works out in this game. Now here we are, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Leaks Extra Edition, number one. So <laughs> there's gonna be more past this, but I think that this is the only one so far. I'll, I'll double check this after this, but here we have the maps. And oh, of course they're blurry images. Okay, so here is an image of the map, blurry. Another image of the map, blurry. And here's it overlaid on the in-game map, blurry. All right, well, you know, thanks for that, guys. I, this was so unbelievably useful. I'm very happy that you took the time to share these images with us and that, oh my gosh, it means so much. We were able to use this for so much. Thank you very much. I hope you, my sarcasm is rubbing off as fully as possible right now. But there you have it, my dear friends. That was the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Leaks roundup from parts four to 13 and everything in between a little bit after. I saw these for the first time with you and I am genuinely shocked by some of them. I am both excited for some of them, but also scared of some of them. There's nothing that I'm purely excited for. That is the scary thing for me with this game. And I already wasn't excited before the leaks, and even after viewing the leaks, I'm still not purely excited for any one particular aspect because I don't know how it's gonna be implemented, if it's gonna be done well, if it's not gonna be done well. Are these gonna be the same coders that did Pokemon Sword and Shield who were new to game coding and didn't know how to code a game properly? Like, what are we gonna be getting here? I am... I'm not, I'm not even cautiously optimistic. I, I would argue I'm possibly not optimistic at all. I would argue that I'm pessimistic on how these games are gonna be when they release. And I'm just hoping that something comes along or that the games just end up being great and coded well and there's no issues and that it's an enjoyable experience all around. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I want. You know, it's not like I want to dislike Pokemon games. I loved Pokemon Legends Arceus. You guys saw that put that game put me on the map on YouTube because I was so excited for it. And you guys, you know, I'm sure that shined through on my videos. But Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I hate to say it. I really do because and I know that some of you probably follow me just for Pokemon, you know, and I am really scared that this is going to be be a big wrench in in the doorway for me both with the pokemon franchise and with making content on pokemon because i don't want to make poke uh, content on a game that i dislike you know so those are my thoughts uh i hope you guys understand i hope you guys are all excited i hope that the games are everything you love and dream of um for me this might not be it uh, I was very, very happy and excited to get a game like Pokemon Legends, which was an idea that I actually had in my head, which was an action game, but with Pokemon, you know? Like, what if there was a big giant Pokemon and you had to, like, sneak your way around it or else it would attack you, you know? I thought, I was like, they'll never make that game. And then they made that game. Literally a month after, I came up with that idea in my head. <sighs> yeah. All right. I've been Johto Johnny, everyone. Yes, Johto is my favorite region, by the way. <laughs> I'll catch you guys in the next video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe if you enjoyed this, and share your thoughts, please, in the comment section. I do want to hear all of your thoughts. I feel like this game needs a lot of discourse right now because I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know if you guys know how to feel about it, so let's talk about it. I'll catch you all later. Peace out.